Emmy-nominated American Morning, CNN, weekday, 6 Eastern. I know that you did a lot of travel in the early 2000s with your parents. You went to Africa back in 2003. Was there, was there a particular moment when you were struck by something where you said, wow, I really have to pitch in here. I have to give back, and this is how I want to do mm -hmm. it. I did. I got to go um, in 2003 to Africa with my parents to five countries, and it was when they were just launching PEPFAR. And PEPFAR really was just an idea then. We hadn't seen what was going to happen yet. Um, and I went to a clinic with my parents and saw, at that time, uh, so many people so excited about the idea of PEPFAR and the fact that they were they were living with HIV and we're going to be able to benefit from it. We should, we should just say the PEPFAR is President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. Yes, exactly. And um, so it was sort of the first large um, U.S. aid plan focused on AIDS relief. And I met so many people that were living with HIV that were doing okay because they were taking antiretrovirals. And then I also met um, a little girl that was not. And, and she had, her mom had brought her to come to this event, I think sort of under this idea that the American president was in their village and it was this really big deal. Um, and she was just a really sick little girl and I just at that time couldn't, I just had never seen anything like that. And, and I know she ended up passing away afterwards. Um, and so I was struck by that, but I was also struck by meeting so many people that were working in this clinic and working on these different initiatives that had really devoted their life to health and to bringing changes in it. And I think that was the first time that I, I was not pre-med. I hadn't studied health. That was the first time that I thought, well, maybe, what am I doing? Maybe I should focus on this. And I can. And, and you really can work in the health field, even if you're not a doctor or nurse. So, it, it, it's, and you talked about just uh, marveling at the fact that there were people dying of preventable illnesses. Where yes. here you or, or John or anybody could go to a clinic and, or go to their doctor and get treated. Mm -hmm. and, and in many cases, you're seeing half a million kids dying uh, unnecessarily. And so you uh, founded, and you're now the president of Global Health Corps, and you're recruiting other young people to do this as well. Explain what your core does. Mm -hmm. I guess we, um, you know, we really wanted to capitalize on the energy and the enthusiasm of people in our age group, young professionals, that can work in the health field. So what we do is we recruit young professionals um, that are 30 years and younger to work for a year in a health organization. And really, they're not, they're not doctors and nurses. They're filling any needs that the organizations have. And what we found is all of our partners want people with technology skills. They want program management skills. They want monitoring and evaluation support. Um, they just want general program support, which are skills that tons of people have. They just don't know that they can use them in the health field. So you, you chose 22 fellows yes. uh, this year out of 1,200 applications. Yes. So you got a lot of people who want to get into this. Uh, you're going to bump that, I think, up to 40 uh, fellows in the next uh, year and maybe 500 five years yes. from now. So that's, that's terrific. But you said everybody's under the age of 30. Why do you limit it to people under the age of 30? We limited it to people under the age of 30 because we really want to, we want to build the next generation of leaders in health. We had seen how Teach for America and City Year had done, had really changed the idea of young people approaching careers to go into education. And there wasn't something like that for health. And so what we really want to show is um, that we can build the next generation of leaders so that older people that have been working in the health field, when they retire, there's more people mm -hmm. going in to there's take their some, place. Somebody to backfill. In yes. Other words. And, and the other question is, in this time, we talk about it being a rough environment for graduates in 2010. <laughs> uh, you know, of course, we're in a recession and we're dealing with a high, high rate of unemployment. Um, does this actually help nonprofit groups in some way? Because you figure, if I'm not going to be able to get a paying job in my field, getting experience and getting those contacts may prove to be vital as mm -hmm. well. Absolutely. Um, we, I think the talent of the people that have been applying to us are unbelievable. And we, one of our fellows was working at Google doing product management and now he's working on uh, health management information systems in Tanzania. So he's someone that has really applicable skills but never thought that they would fit in the health field. Yeah. So he started rethinking about his career path because of the recession, because of the economy. And that's just one example of, you know, the types of skills that people have right now, but they may not continue working in their fields. You know, many people have said that PEPFAR is going to be your, your, your father's en enduring legacy. here, And I know that your mother has uh, been very concerned about health issues, particularly re regarding women, breast cancer, heart disease. Did they give you any advice when you were getting into this? Um, they gave me a lot of advice, really. Uh, and I, I really, through exposure from them, 
uh, that's how I got involved in health, and that's how I got interested in health. So what did they tell you? Um, I mean, everything. Literally, trying to starting a nonprofit from the beginning is something that I had never done. And then working in the health field and trying to figure out the smartest people and the best people to talk to and the best organizations to partner with uh, was a whole new thing for me. And so... Um, so really, they've given me advice on everything. And personally for you, where do you see yourself going next? Or what, what, what are your goals for the future? I, you know, I want to keep working on this. I'm really excited for in five years when we do have 500 fellows. And in 10 years when we see these young people that have done our program are really committing their lives to the health field and, and changing what's the outcomes. I think that's the most exciting is to think, what are our fellows going to do with their future? And uh, and, and how are we all going to benefit from that? So that's what I want to see in my future. So what's the best piece of advice your dad gave you? Um, I'd say I, I was nervous just starting this in the first place. And my dad said, you know, you're going to really regret it if you don't do it. So just do it. You know, there's nothing to lose. It's a good idea. And, and you know, you're essentially helping young people get involved in a field that needs more young people. So do it.